Welcome to QuiltArisAnonymous.com. I'm Stephanie Sebbing. Today I'm coming to you from my garage because I'm going to be making over this hutch to go in my sewing studio. It's got a lot of storage, so I'm going to be able to fit a lot of notions in here. Plus, it's going to look great in the background of all the video tutorials I do for you guys. And this isn't going to necessarily be a tutorial because I'm not going to go step by step with the great detail the way I do in my quilting. But I'm going to show you the transformation. Hopefully, you can use some of the tips and tricks with your own projects around the house uh, related to quilting and making your sewing cabinets beautiful and the furniture in your sewing room beautiful as well. I really like this piece because it has good bones. It's really, it's solid wood. It has some great details in the craftsmanship that are really gonna work well when I do this with a two color paint distress. And what that means is I'm gonna paint it two colors and then I'm gonna sand to distress it. And that will show through the base coat underneath to really give it kind of a rough look, but in that shabby chic that's really popular right now. Um, However, there are some bumps and bruises on here. You can tell it's been well loved and by its previous owners. And it, it would be a great piece to just leave as is in a dining room. But for my creative space and my sewing room, I really need to go crazy and get some good colors in this piece for it to fit in that room. So I'm gonna change into some paint clothes and we're gonna get started working on this piece. I'm also going to take this backdrop off so that I can work with it in two pieces. So I've done quite a bit of work off camera. I removed all the drawers and door fronts and took all the hardware off and I put it all in a plastic bag. You'll want to do that too so you don't lose any pieces. I decided that I'm not going to use the doors to the top of the hutch because I want this to be a nice open display space. So I set those aside and I filled in the screw holes with some sandable wood putty and let that dry and then sanded it smooth. And I also painted the inside of the drawers. And that's just so that I it will have a nice dry surface to work with when I get to this base coat for everything else. Now, that's it for prep work. Besides wiping everything down with a nice clean rag, um, you don't have to prime, you don't have to sand. When you use Annie Sloan chalk paint, you can just go straight over the top. And I've got Paris Gray. And I'm going to paint everything, every surface with the Paris Gray because that's going to be my base coat. In some places it's going to get a second coat and you're going to see that Paris Gray. And in some places I'm going to go with more of a teal color to get that two color look. But I'm going to start out with this. I also have an Annie Sloan brush. It's a little expensive when you first get started to buy the brush and the paint and everything else that you need. But this is great stuff. I've used it on a couple of projects now and I'm really happy with the results. I used to struggle with getting brush strokes and everything and I'm, that's not the case with this. You know, you have your nice brush, you have your nice paint and they really get great results for a lot less effort than you would have to with, you know, sanding a little bit in between each coat with some of the other cheaper stuff. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started and we're gonna do some fast forward through this set because other would be really long and boring if you just watch me paint everything. Um, but I'm gonna get going here and we're gonna get started. but that's because it's just the first coat you need to put a second one on in order to get that nice smooth finish that chalk any Sloan chalk paint is famous for um, so what I'm gonna do off camera is I'm gonna go ahead and get a second coat of Paris gray to all the areas that I intend to just leave a solid gray and the areas that I intended to stress like the edges of this table I'm gonna give a second coat to that as well but if I'm gonna cover it with my second coat which is that teal color then I'm just gonna let it be because I'm gonna sand it and I wanna get a little bit of the gray and a little bit of the wood tone showing through when it's all done. 
So that those parts don't need a second coat. So if you're doing this at home, any part that you intend to have be your base color, go ahead and give it a second coat. And the rest of it you can go ahead and wait until the next day, which I'm going to give this all a day to dry. And then I'm going to put on my second coat and start my distressing. So I hope you have fun doing this at home and I hope this gives you some ideas. And I'll be back tomorrow, um, but it'll just be a couple of seconds thanks to the magic of editing. So it's a new day. I've let my first base coat dry overnight. I went ahead and did a second coat on everything that the Paris Gray is on. That way I'll be able to just get away with using one coat of my secondary color, which is Florence, which is this beautiful teal color. It dries a little bit deeper than you can see here in this can really love it and it matches everything else that's going in my sewing room and i'm going to use two brushes today i've got my um one that i've been using all along and then i also have this Andy sewn flat number 30. this is really great for getting into detail work because i don't really like to tape i find i get a cleaner line if i just go slow with a detail brush than if i try to tape and then you've got to do a bunch of touch-ups and i just find that this works a lot better so I'm going to start off with this large brush and I'm going to go ahead and start painting the top of this bottom portion of the hutch, the back of the hutch, um, the backdrop, and then the drawer fronts as well. So we're going to do some more fast forward and I'm going to do a little bit of chatting uh, to give you some tips and tricks on how to get nice clean lines with this detail brush once we get to that. use my little detail brush this flat number 30 by Annie Sloan and it really helps me get right in there real close you just have to keep a steady hand so it takes a little bit of practice but once you do you'll never have to tape again and it works really well so I'm just gonna get I'm just gonna get a little bit of paint on this paintbrush you don't want a ton because you don't want to overload it and get paint everywhere but then what I do here is I Start off maybe an inch or so away from the edge, and then I get real close there at the edge of the brush, just sort of kissing that corner, and then guiding that along. And I really only do a couple inches at a time because that's one, it's all the paint you have for um, on the brush, and two, that gives you a good chance to just focus on a small section and then move on. But I'm going to go ahead and paint the entire back portion of this hutch with this teal color here. Alright, it's time for the second to last step and that is waxing and distressing the parts of the furniture where I want to see that two color technique. So I now have some Annie Sloan wax and a wax brush. Um, there are two versions of these. One is all um, natural fibers and the other has some acrylic in it. It's a little bit cheaper. That's the one that I have and it works great. And you also are going to need a lint-free rag. An old t-shirt works great for this stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start getting a little bit of wax on the tip of my brush. You don't need a, a ton. It kind of goes a long way. And then you just want to start working it into the piece. And I kind of wipe it in a few areas to help it go a little further. It's kind of like the analogy they use for this is like putting lotion on. You get a little bit on in one spot and then you rub it all over. And that's how you want to use the wax. And you want to try to work as much of it in with the brush as possible. You'll waste less wax that way. This does go a long way. I'm on my third piece and I'm still on the first can I ever bought. And so it does last quite a while, but it is expensive, so you definitely don't want to waste it. So once I feel like I've worked that in pretty good, then it's time to get a little more wax on my brush and work in some more. I'm going to show you a close-up so you can see a little bit more of what I'm talking about here. So I've got just a little bit of wax on my brush. I'm going to start moving that around in the areas that still need it. And you're going to notice that your paint is going to appear slightly darker 
when you put this on, it really just enhances the color a little bit. It doesn't change it. And it will go back to its regular color that it was painted once it is dried and fully cured. So don't worry if you absolutely fell in love with the color the way it was. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh no, it's darker. It, it'll get back to normal very soon. Once you've finished applying wax to your piece, you wanna take your clean lint-free rag and you wanna start buffing that in. What this does is it removes any excess wax and it also works it in to make a nice smooth finish on your piece. I'm ready for the final step now and that's distressing. I have a fine sanding block. You want that extra fine um, finish for that sandpaper because you don't want to rough it up too much. You just want to create some natural distresses in areas where it normally would get wear and tear. So for me, I'm going to go for the edges and the raised bits. And I just want to take off a little bit. I don't want to do some major distressing to this piece. I just want a little bit of subtle gray tones showing through and a little bit of wood tones here and there. So I'm just kind of taking my sanding block and I'm running it along the edges just to take off a little bit of paint along those raised edges kind of where it would already get some wear and tear anyway. And I'm being careful not to get too much on the inside. I really just want to get those edges taken off. And same with around here. I just want to see a little bit of that gray for that base coat. And here and there, just a little bit of wood grain showing through as well. So once you're done, you want to take your wax and your wax brush and give everything one more coat. If you wanted to, you also could do dark wax at this point to give a little bit extra flair to your finished piece. Well, my hutch is finished now. I put everything back together once I finished distressing everything and doing that final waxing coat. I really love the way it turned out. It fits my entire quilting library. I've got space for a few more books. And then I have lots of space for decorative items that also double as storage, as well as uh, the silverware tray in this drawer makes a great place to store all those odds and ends. I've got all my buttons in one drawer, needles in another, painting brushes in a third, and it keeps it from really moving all around. So I love that those uh, storage trays for that silverware so worked out perfectly for that. I also can fit my entire fat quarter collection in the second drawer, and I still have space for quite a bit more fabric collecting, so that's really exciting. So thank you for following along. I hope that this inspires you to paint something in your home, especially if it's in your sewing room. Uh, check out my other tutorials. I have a couple of them on how to refinish sewing cabinets. So you can take a vintage sewing cabinet that maybe you find at Goodwill or garage sale or was passed down and make it totally new into your creativity tastes. And thanks for following along and happy quilting!